API fuzzing. Today we'll talk about what API fuzzing is, how it compares to more traditional testing. And with that, we'll have um, Jose Aro Peralta with us, author of Microservices APIs. Hey, Jose, thank you so much for joining. Hi, Eric. Thank you for having me. Very excited. Yeah, and thanks for coming back. So you were you were here and talked about your book. And in your book, you also talk about testing, of course. And um, in your book, you also talk about API fuzzing. And I thought it might be interesting because I think it's something that's not yet fully mainstream, so to speak. So I ask you to please talk a little bit about fuzzing. So please give us your explanation of what API fuzzing is and why it's interesting for people who are in the API space. Sure. So when you think about APIs, when you, if you think, for example, um, uh, traditional REST API uh, documented with Open API and so on, uh, the whole thing about uh, Open API or REST APIs is we have schemas, right? And and the the difficulty here when we are testing is we want to make sure our API is uh, is capable to uh, accept valid payloads, but it's also rejecting correctly all the invalid payloads that that, that we could send to the API. Um, if you if you are going to test for a single payload, all the possible combinations of the right and the wrong payloads, if you're going to do that by hand, you would write maybe hundreds of tests for every endpoint. So what FACI testing is going to do is going to automatically generate all sorts of valid and invalid payloads, send them to your API, and make sure that they are correctly processed. Mm -hmm. And um, and that means, and I think this is really important to highlight, right? That that fuzzing is not um, replacing the functional testing that you, of course, also should do, but it, it complements it, and it's a, it's a very effective method, it seems to me. So, so you use it a lot. I use it a lot, and it makes a huge difference when I'm working on a on a team, you know, on a on an API project with a client, and we we have this because the way you get started with a with an API, usually you get the implementation out there, write a couple or a few uh, unit tests just to make sure the the happy path is working. But then APIs get complex, and and the clients may diverge from the server implementation. So we want to make sure that the API is correctly processing the wrong payloads and the in the. But it would be very cumbersome for the development team to to invest time on on writing all those test cases. So once we put something like uh, like a fuzzy testing tool in in place, it makes our life so much mm -hmm. easier because we don't have to focus on testing so much. Mm -hmm. Okay, that so I think that really sounds like a good idea, and 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 you were kind enough to agree to do a little demo. So what we'll do is we'll look at a specific tool in that space, which is called uh, Schema Thesis, which I think is also the one you use in your book, right? That's correct. Yeah, yeah. And um, so we'll do that, and we'll give you a little bit of a taste of what it looks like, and also that it's actually very easy to get started with. I think this is really one of the important points here, right? It's like, it's basically zero cost to get started with it. Exactly, all you need is an open API specification if you're working with REST APIs or a schema if it is GraphQL and your server. You don't need anything else. And obviously install the schema thesis, that's all. Yeah. And speaking of server, we have one here right in front of us. So um, let's jump right in. Correct. So this is an example I'm bringing from my book. Uh, it's a uh, it's an orders API. So it, uh, it's it's an API that helps you people uh, make orders through the API. What I'm go what I'm, what we are going to do is we're going to run the the server first. So you can pick up the example from the link you will see in the description. But if you want to run the example, all you need to do is install the dependencies like this: pip install hyphen dev that will install all the dependencies. And then to run the server, we do ubicon. And then the path to the uh, to the uh, specific application object to reload to be able to dynamically load the changes to the code. And then we're going to run schema thesis now. All the code is correct now at this point, so you're just going to see how schema thesis tells you that everything is working fine. So the command is very simple. What we see is a schema thesis run. You give the path to the OpenAPI specification file in your code. You give it the basic the base URL of your server, and in this case, we're going to tell Schema Thesis to check for all kinds of errors in the server, server errors, status code conformance, and so on. So we're going to we're going to run this now. So it's telling us it's identified seven operations in the Open API. We have links in the API specification, so it's relating uh, the post endpoint to specific resource URLs, and it's testing that too. So this is fuzzing in progress. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> right. 
So you see, for every type of error that is testing, it's done uh, 1,200 tests. You can do more than that or less than that. That's configurable. Uh, and it, in this case, everything is passing. So what we're going to see now is what happens if we did something wrong in the implementation of our validation schemas. So we have a quantity property here, which is an integer. It should be uh, greater than 1. For some reason, let's say someone has set this to float during the server development work. And obviously, we want to make sure everything is still working. Server is reloaded because we have it with the hot reloading enabled. So we're going to run schema thesis again. And now we see a fail here. And it's going to tell still us. Still happy for now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so some others are fine, but yeah, it's yeah. not the error in one of the. That, that's the thing about fuzzy testing, right? It's not going to tell you whether everything that everything is failing always because it's a little bit randomized. But in the collection of endpoints, it will find one error. And I think you know the error that you introduced, where you uh, where you start responding with a different type. That's probably one that's going to get caught. I guess that's a pretty exactly. obvious one. Exactly. Yeah. So in this case, it's phrased the error. It told us that the response status, the response conformance of the schema is not right, and it tells us the the report. So it says the received response doesn't conform with the defined schema. It tells us there's something in the response is 1.1, which is not an integer, which is what it should be. Mm -hmm. It gives us this, the path to the specific property that is wrong and, and more details. And uh, it gives you also the details of how you can reproduce the error if you if you want to try that yourself. But that's the good thing. You've made your server implementation yourself. You've made a mistake. You were not aware of that. You run a schema thesis. It tells you exactly what was failing in the, in the server. Yeah. And what you've showed us is, is super simple, right? The command line is as simple as it can possibly get. There's more that you can do. We won't go through the details, but can you just very quickly mention some of the things that you can also do with schema thesis if you want to dive a little bit deeper? Sure. So you can configure how many examples it's going to run. So you, if you want to run more or less examples uh, for each type of error, you can configure the type of error you want to check. You can configure whether you want to take in, uh, into account authorization for the API. Um, you can uh, you can configure the strategies for generating the tests as well. So the underlying frameworking hypothesis allows you to have to choose some default configurations for that. And you can you can save the examples to replay them later. So it has a lot of configurations to mm -hmm. to make your test suite as flexible as you as you need to. Okay, so you can start playing with around around with this very easily, but then you can get more sophisticated over time. Um, I know that you have a repo for this that people can use yeah. to get started with the demo that you just showed. Okay, nice. So we we'll link to this from the description. Yeah. Uh, so this is it's it's from a book, but it's completely free. You can come here and check it out. The specifically the this application that will be in the link, and mm -hmm. you can use that to replicate the example. Okay, and we'll link this and also, of course, also have, um, schema thesis itself from the video. And with that, I think we are already done. Thank you so much for the demo. I think, you know, it was really like very short and, and to the point. And I think to reiterate, right, API fuzzing is very simple and very effective. It's a good way to augment your testing, not to replace your testing. Exactly. So the, it's going to test only the, the interfacing layer and it's going to use as sort of randomized strategy. So you, if you want to test for very specific cases, you still do that yourself. And if you want to understand how those payloads are working with the business layer in your server, you still need to do that yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So I hope everybody found that interesting. And you know, you now you go ahead and start fuzzing your APIs as well. <laughs> that probably would help. Um, so with that, once again, thanks for joining. Thanks for the demo, Jose. And um, thank you so thanks. much. Yeah, thanks everybody for uh, watching. I hope you find this interesting. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Um, and with that, we're done for today. Thank you very much and keep getting APIs to work and keep fuzzing them. Bye. Awesome, bye. <laughs>